Hey, I'm Dave. Today I'm going to build an elevated storage platform in my shop. You're watching Parts and Restoration. Hey gang, welcome back to the shop. Um, another exciting episode here of Parts and Restoration. I'm building a platform that I can store temporarily my machinery on so that I can have my uh, my concrete floors redone. I'm having plumbing roughed in and a new pad poured. Everything's got to get up off the ground. So uh, I'm using repurposed wood from the demolition of my shop. There's a video of that. Check those out. And uh, let's get into it. First steps were to measure everything. I wanted to get a rough idea of how large the platform needed to be to accommodate everything. Then I purchased some uh, grade 70 chain, which I'm, is going to be supporting the cantilevered end of the platform. One end of the platform is going to be resting on a curb. Now, interestingly, there's a, there's a truck drive shaft up in the, uh, the ceiling of my shop resting on these I-beams, which served as a really stout high point, and I'm mounting my chain right to that, um, as the previous owner had done as well. That there is me proving that I'm a certified badass. Boom. Now you know. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we're gonna put some timbers on that curb. Uh, unnecessary chainsaw usage just for a laugh. And uh, I'm using this um, I'm using this Bosch one inch masonry drill. To, it's a hammer rotary hammer drill to drill into the masonry. Doesn't didn't drill through the wood as well as I'd hoped, but that wasn't a problem. Uh, once the holes went through, we were just fine. Going right into the masonry. Depth stop was set just so. Uh, a little trick you can do when you make all the dust from the drill, and you can use the cooling fan of the uh, drill to blow the dust away. Like that. And I'm using redhead sleeve anchors. These are 5 8 anchors. I used uh, four of them to hold this timber in place. And this is going to serve as a uh, bottom plate for the timbers that I'm cutting. Now, those are all repurposed 2x10s that I'm going to cut to length and measured from the wall to the dangling end of the chain, which was approximately 76 inches. So I want to have those chains be perfectly plumb when they're hanging. Guys, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, if you're enjoying what you see. I post daily photos and videos on Instagram, at Parts and Restoration, and I'm on Patreon as well if you want to support the channel, at Parts and Restoration. Now this is a sister beam that I'm making. It was already uh, sort of as so for the old shop. It's demolished, it was demolished as is. I'm clamping it together and I'm gonna fix the two pieces together more securely with some long fasteners. And all of the fasteners in this build are GFK fasteners. They have the Torx end on them. I was never sold on them until I tried them and now I'll never use anything else. The Torx uh, really makes it so you don't, you're never stripping any screws out. You always have positive contact. Just laying my, um, my joists into place. They're 16 inches on center, and I'm putting them in some joist hangers. Right now I'm just tacking them in place, and I'm going to put some more fasteners in later. I use a long 2x4 to pick up all the loose ends and pull it over as a unit and rest them on their bottom plate. And I'm using the uh, my Singer base for the Singer 29K that I'm restoring, video out probably next week. Um, and just getting everything pl uh, plumbed up, squared up, and I'm dog earing those into place. Now this diagonal member will keep the uh, the whole system from racking while I install everything and uh, adds a little bit of uh, strength to the system. Again, three and one eighth GSK fasteners. Uh, they're fantastic. And I'm just doing a little rough out, just kind of laying everything out, and then after which I will uh, I will attach them to the, the joists. And down goes Fraser. Fail. I was fine. Don't blame the flip flops. I just wasn't paying attention. Now, like I said before, I sort of just tacked those ends into place. Now I'm just putting a bunch more fasteners in place. With something like this, it's important to use a lot of fasteners because the strength is in the fasteners. Um, you know, they really are what is carrying the load here. Quick check to make sure everything was uh, nice and level. And it was. And a little torture test. A couple kicks. Take that. And that. Blah! And water bottle, and okay. Now, I didn't have a pencil in my shop anywhere, so I just kind of went for it, and I failed. But you know what? That's fine. It doesn't matter. This isn't fine work. And I'm just cleaning up this end uh, with an uh, old honey glistening saw. Cross cut saw. Nice little fellow there. That was steward. Gave it a workout. Gave myself a workout as well. Whoa. Movie magic. Little random edits. Gotta love it.
and we're on to the next step. Going to load up my machines. Now this is a uh, nice old engine crane that I was given by my neighbor who moved away. And uh, it can hold at least 30, 3,200 pounds, which is the weight of my Brown and Sharp number two surface grinder. And um, you know, this was a major ordeal. The wheels on this thing were completely, or are completely shot, and it just did not roll the way it needed to. Plus, the thing's heavy as a, well, you know what. So um, I'm loading it up, getting it up in the air. It was nice and strong. I was actually funny. It didn't come with a uh, with a piece of pipe to work the pump on the hydraulic piece there, so I wound up using the uh, pick head of a pick head or a pick, like a wall pick that uh, like a miner would use that I had just laying around the shop. I recently de-rusted it, so look for that next time I'm pumping something. I'm holding a pick head in my hand, and uh, no catastrophic failures there, so that's a win. Next up is the Delta Unisol going up in the air, and we're gonna put that in place. Got my pick in my hand. <laughs> Too funny. And uh, that's going to go on the other side to balance things out. And we're just going to add machinery here as we go. Next up is the jointer. You'll see a major fail here in a second. Look for it. Oh, down she goes. But you know what? The strap is rated and it held. So no problems. I was able to adjust that once it got up onto the platform, as you'll see. And good to go. Two bandsaws going up. Check out the video of this bandsaw if you haven't already seen it. And uh, a future restoration, my Johnson. Now, thanks so much for watching, guys. Check me out on Instagram at Parts and Restoration. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, support the channel at Parts and Restoration on Patreon. And um, hit that like button, share it if you want, and subscribe. You guys are the best. Thanks for watching.